I've realized that a lot of my stories, as dark as this sounds, center around death. Usually you're supposed to be like, oh my God, my life is falling apart. But instead of looking at it that way, but it's a beautiful lyrical song inside of it. My name is Gabriela Rodriguez. I am from the South Bronx and I am studying cinema and television with a concentration in script and screenwriting. I started my first year of college to do physical therapy. I flunked. I found myself on academic probation. I was on the verge of being kicked out of college and my financial aid was taken away. That moment I was just like, all right, God, like you win. Cause I always had that like word of writing and I just never saw it. I tend to write center around the dynamic of a mother and daughter. It's called One Step at a Time. Both the mother and the daughter are sick. However, the daughter kind of retracts and doesn't really tell her mother about it because she wants to put her mother's feelings first. So we're following uh, the main character, Amari. Amari has a lot of characteristics. I want to say she has a lot of my characteristics, um, but I wanted to create this selfless daughter figure who is going through this really hard time where she knows what her end goal is. At the end of this, she doesn't make it. And she knows that. She knows that she's gonna be gone. She knows that she's gonna die. It encapsulates the idea of that mother-daughter relationship, but also that daughter giving back to her mother, which I say, or I think it really is a good mirror of my relationship with my own mom. You know, I always tell my mom, I wouldn't like, I will take a bullet for you. And I feel like my main character is, is very much like that. She's very protective of her mother and she's thinking way beyond. Not only is she worried about what she needs to do while she's physically here, but she wants to make sure that after she's gone, everything is good and in motion. We even hear it in Amari's last words to her mother. Mom, if you're reading this, that means I'm in the hospital. I can never ever begin to explain why I kept this secret for so many years. It was something in my heart that needed to remain a secret for the time being. It was something that allowed me to grow as a person and allowed me to help others in doing so. You always wondered how I was always so optimistic throughout my life, even with daddy's death. I think God made me that way because he knew what my mission on this earth was. That's to spread optimism to you. There were many times I wanted to tell you, like the time you had your first chemo session, my arm uncontrollably spilling the water, or the day I broke your favorite mug because I didn't get a good grip on it. The one thing I don't want you to do is blame yourself for what happened to me. It's not your fault, just my body isn't as strong as others. You have been the best mother a daughter could have ever asked for, and I cherish every moment spent by your side. You cared for me the way a mother should have and gave me everything you could. But sometimes, the plans we have in our mind are not what God has planned for us. And that's okay. I want you to know that I'm okay. I'm okay with this decision of life. I'm okay with it happening to me and not to you. I want you to always remember the good times we had. Remember me smiling and remember me laughing. Life is not about rushing to go forward. It's not about trying to get to the next month. It's about appreciating the moments in the now. Enclose in the envelope are two checks. I'm sure my check will get you by for the next year being that I have given you my life savings. I love you so, so much, beautiful, always and forever. I'll tell daddy you said hello. Remember to always smile and think positively. Love always, your angel.